The Liturgy of the Hours Latin, liturgia horarum or Divine Office Latin, officium divinum or Work of God Latin, opus dei or Canonical Hours, often referred to as the breviary, is the official set of prayers, "...marking the hours of each day and sanctifying the day with prayer." It consists primarily of psalms supplemented by hymns, readings and other prayers and antiphons. Together with the Mass, it constitutes the official public prayer life of the Church. The Liturgy of the Hours also forms the basis of prayer within Christian monasticism. Celebration of the Liturgy of the Hours is an obligation undertaken by priests and deacons intending to become priests, while deacons intending to remain deacons are obliged to recite only a part. The constitutions of religious institutes generally oblige their members to celebrate at least parts and in some cases to do so jointly. In choir. The laity are under no public obligation to do so, but may oblige themselves to do so by personal vow, and are encouraged to recite the divine office, either with the priests, or among themselves, or even individually. The Liturgy of the Hours, along with the Eucharist, has formed part of the Church's public worship from the earliest times. Christians of both Western and Eastern and traditions including the Roman Catholic, Eastern Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, Assyrian, Anglican, Lutheran, and some other Protestant churches celebrate the Liturgy of the Hours under various names. Within Roman Catholicism, the Liturgy of the Hours, once contained within what was called the Roman Breviary, is in its present form found in what in English editions is called either the Liturgy of the Hours arranged in four volumes or the Divine Office in three volumes. In Greek the corresponding services are found in the Horologion, Horologion meaning Book of Hours. Within Anglicanism, the Liturgy of the Hours is contained within the Book of Daily Prayer of Common Worship and the Book of Common Prayer, as well as in the Anglican Breviary. Within Lutheranism, it is contained within the liturgical books used by the various Lutheran church bodies. Other names for the Liturgy of the Hours within the Latin liturgical rites include diurnal and nocturnal office, ecclesiastical office, cursus ecclesiasticus, or simply cursus. Origins <inaudible> 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 The early Christians continued the Jewish practice of reciting prayers at certain hours of the day or night. In the Psalms are found expressions like, In the morning I offer you my prayer. At midnight I will rise and thank you. Evening, morning and at noon I will cry and lament. Seven times a day I praise you. The apostles observed the Jewish custom of praying at the third, sixth and ninth hour and at midnight Acts chapter 10 verse 3, 9, 16, 25, etc. The Christian prayer of that time consisted of almost the same elements as the Jewish, recital or chanting of psalms, reading of the Old Testament, to which were soon added readings of the Gospels, Acts, and Epistles, and Canticles. Other elements were added later in the course of the centuries. Canonical hours Topic. Topic. Previous structure Topic. By the end of the 5th century, the Liturgy of the Hours was composed of seven offices. Of these seven, Compline seems to have been the last to appear, because the 4th century Apostolic Constitutions 8 IV 34 do not mention it in the exhortation. Offer up your prayers in the morning, at the third hour, the sixth, the ninth, the evening, and at cock crowing. An eighth office, prime, was added by Benedict of Nursia in the 6th century. These eight are known by the following names, which do not reflect the times of the day at which in the second millennium they were traditionally recited, as shown by the use of the word noon, derived from Latin hora nona, to mean midday, not three in the afternoon. Matins during the night, at midnight with some, also called vigils or nocturnes or, in monastic usage, the night office Lauds or dawn prayer at dawn, or 3 a.m. Prime or early morning prayer first hour equals approximately 6 a.m. Terse or mid-morning prayer third hour equals approximately 9 a.m. Sext or midday prayer sixth hour equals approximately 12 noon. None or mid-afternoon prayer ninth hour equals approximately 3 p.m. Vespers or evening prayer at the lighting of the lamps generally at 6 p.m. Compline or night prayer before retiring generally at 9 p.m. This arrangement of the liturgy of the hours is attributed to Saint Benedict. 
However, it is found in St. John Cassian's Institutes and Conferences, which describe the monastic practices of the Desert Fathers of Egypt. Current structure after the Second Vatican Council, which decided that the Hour of Prime should be suppressed, Pope Paul VI promulgated a new Liturgy of the Hours. The structure of the offices, the distribution of psalms, and the prayers were updated. The distinction, already expressed in the 1960 Code of Rubrics, between the three major hours matins, lauds and, vespers and the minor hours terse, sext, nun and compline, has been retained. The officium lectionis, or office of readings, formerly matins, major hour. Lauds or morning prayer, major hour. Daytime prayer, minor hour or hours, one or more of. Terse or mid morning prayer before noon. Sext or midday prayer. None or afternoon or mid afternoon prayer. Vespers or evening prayer, major hour. Compline or night prayer, minor hural hours, including the minor hours, start with the versicle from P70 v. 2 as do all offices in the traditional breviary except matins and compline. v. Deus, in auditorium meum intend. r. Domini, ad adiavandum me festina. God, come to my assistance, Lord, make haste to help me, followed by the doxology. The verse is omitted if the hour begins with the invitatory lauds or office of reading. The invitatory is the introduction to the first hour set on the current day, whether it be the office of readings or morning prayer. The opening is followed by a hymn. The hymn is followed by psalmody. The psalmody is followed by a scripture reading. The reading is called a chapter capitulum if it is short, or a lesson lectio if it is long. The reading is followed by a versicle. The hour is closed by an oration followed by a concluding versicle. Other components are included depending on the exact type of hour being celebrated. In each office, the psalms and canticle are framed by antiphons, and each concludes with the traditional Catholic doxology. Topic. Major hours Topic. The major hours consist of the office of readings, morning or lauds and evening prayer or vespers. The office of readings consists of Opening versicle or invitatory A hymn One or two long psalms divided into three parts A long passage from scripture, usually arranged so that in any one week, all the readings come from the same text A long hagiographical passage, such as an account of a saint's martyrdom, or a theological treatise commenting on some aspect of the scriptural reading, or a passage from the documents of the Second Vatican Council on nights preceding Sundays and feast days, the office may be expanded to a vigil by inserting three Old Testament canticles and a reading from the Gospels. The hymn Te Diem on Sundays, solemnities, and feasts, except in Lent. The concluding prayer. A short concluding verse especially when prayed in groups the character of morning prayer is that of praise, of evening prayer, that of thanksgiving. Both follow a similar format. Opening versicle or for morning prayer, the invitatory, a hymn, composed by the church, two psalms, or parts of psalms with a scriptural canticle. At morning prayer, this consists of a psalm of praise, a canticle from the Old Testament, followed by another psalm. At evening prayer this consists of two psalms, or one psalm divided into two parts, and a scriptural canticle taken from the New Testament. A short passage from scripture. A responsory, typically a verse of scripture, but sometimes liturgical poetry. A canticle taken from the Gospel of Luke, the canticle of Zechariah Benedictus for morning prayer, and the canticle of Mary Magnificat for evening prayer. Intercessions, composed by the Church. The Lord's Prayer. The concluding prayer, composed by the Church. A blessing given by the priest or deacon leading morning or evening prayer, or in the absence of clergy and in individual recitation, a short concluding versicle. Topic. Minor hours Topic. The daytime hours follow a simpler format, like a very compact form of the Office of Readings. Opening versicle A hymn 
three short psalms, or, three pieces of longer psalms, in the daytime hours when only one is said it follows a variable psalmody which usually opens with part of the longest psalm, Psalm 118-119, when all three are said this psalmody is used at one of the hours, while the other two follow the complementary psalmody which consists of 119-120 to 121-122 at terse, 122-123 to 124-125 at sec and 125-126 to 127-128 at none. A very short passage of scripture, followed by a responsorial verse. The concluding prayer. A short concluding verse v. Benedicamus Domino R. Deo Gratias Night Prayer Compline has the character of preparing the soul for its passage to eternal life. Opening versicle. An examination of conscience. A hymn. A psalm, or two short psalms, the Psalms of Sunday, Psalm 90 91 or 4 and 133 134 may always be used as an alternative to the psalms appointed on weekdays. A short reading from Scripture. The responsory in Manus Tuas, Domini, into your hands, Lord. The Canticle of Simeon, Nunc Dimittis, from the Gospel of Luke, framed by the Antiphon Salvanos, Save us Lord. A concluding prayer. A short blessing noctum quietam et finum perfectum concedit nobis dominus omnipotens. Amen. Marian antiphon without versicle and concluding prayer, either one of the four traditional seasonal antiphons, or sub tomb, or another antiphon approved by the local episcopal conference. The Regina Cayley is always used in Eastertide. Usage an invitatory precedes the canonical hours of the day beginning with the versicle, Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Ps. 50 51 v.17, and continuing with an antiphon and the invitatory psalm, usually Psalm 94 95. All psalms and canticles are accompanied by antiphons. Unless the invitatory is used, each hour begins with the versicle, God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. P. 69 70th v.2, followed by a hymn. Each hour concludes with a prayer followed by a short versicle and response. Matins or the office of readings is the longest hour. Before Pope St. Pius X's reform, it involved the recitation of 18 psalms on Sundays and 12 on ferial days. Pope Pius X reduced this to nine psalms or portions of psalms, still arranged in three nocturnes, each set of three psalms followed by three short readings, usually three consecutive sections from the same text. Pope Paul VI's reform reduced the number of psalms or portions of psalms to three, and the readings to two, but lengthened these. On feast days the Te Deum is sung or recited before the concluding prayer. After St. Pius X's reform, Lodz was reduced to four psalms or portions of psalms and an Old Testament canticle, putting an end to the custom of adding the last three psalms of the Psalter 148 at the end of Lodz every day. The number of psalms or portions of psalms is now reduced to two, together with one Old Testament canticle chosen from a wider range than before. After these there is a short reading and response and the singing or recitation of the Benedictus. Vespers has a very similar structure, differing in that Pius X assigned to it five psalms now reduced to two psalms and a New Testament canticle and the Magnificat took the place of the Benedictus. On some days in Pius X's arrangement, but now always, there follow presses or intercessions. In the present arrangement, the Lord's prayer is also recited before the concluding prayer. Terse, sext and nun have an identical structure, each with three psalms or portions of psalms. These are followed by a short reading from scripture, once referred to as a little chapter, capitulum, and by a versicle and response. The lesser litany Kyrie and the Lord's prayer of Pius X's arrangement have now been omitted. Prime and Compline also were of similar structure, though different from terse, sext and nun. Topic. Books used Topic. In monasteries and cathedrals, celebration of the liturgy of the hours became more elaborate. 
Served by monks or canons, regular celebration required a psalter for the psalms, a lectionary for the scripture readings, other books for hagiographical readings, a collectary for the orations, and also books such as the antiphonary and the responsoriary for the various chants. These were usually of large size, to enable several monks to chant together from the same book. Smaller books called breviaries a word that etymologically refers to a compendium or abridgment were developed to indicate the format of the daily office and assist in identifying the texts to be chosen. These developed into books that gave in abbreviated form because they omitted the chants and in small lettering the whole of the texts, and so could be carried when traveling. Pope Innocent III made them official in the Roman Curia, and the itinerant Franciscan friars adopted the Breviarium Curiae and soon spread its use throughout Europe. By the 14th century, these breviaries contained the entire text of the canonical hours. The invention of printing made it possible to produce them in great numbers. In its final session, the Council of Trent entrusted to the Pope the revision of the breviary. With his apostolic constitution quad a nobis of 9 July 1568, Pope Pius V promulgated an edition of the breviary, known as the Roman breviary, which he imposed in the same way in which, two years later, he imposed his Roman Missal. Using language very similar to that in the Bull Quo Primum, with which he promulgated the Missal, regarding, for instance, the perpetual force of its provisions, he made it obligatory to use the promulgated text everywhere, he totally prohibited adding or omitting anything. No one whosoever is permitted to alter this letter or heedlessly to venture to go contrary to this notice of our permission, statute, ordinance, command, precept, grant, indult declaration, will decree and prohibition. Should anyone, however, presume to commit such an act, he should know that he will incur the wrath of Almighty God and of the blessed Apostles Peter and Paul." It is obvious that he did not thereby intend to bind his successors. Pope Clement VIII made changes that he made obligatory on 10 May 1602, 34 years after Pius V's revision. Urban VIII made further changes, including, "...a profound alteration in the character of some of the hymns." Although some of them without doubt gained in literary style, nevertheless, to the regret of many, they also lost something of their old charm of simplicity and fervor. For the profound revision of the book by Pope Pius X, see Reform of the Roman Breviary by Pope Pius X. Finally, a new revision was made by Pope Paul VI with his Apostolic Constitution Laudus Canticum of 1 November 1970. Many of the complicated rubrics or instructions that had governed recitation of the liturgy were clarified, and the actual method of praying the office was made simpler. Prime had already been abolished by the Second Vatican Council. Of the three intermediate hours of terse, sext and nun, only one was to be of strict obligation. Recitation of the psalms and a much increased number of canticles was spread over four weeks instead of one. Three psalms 58, 83, and 109 have been omitted from the Psalter cycle because of their curses. In the same way, some verses have been omitted from certain psalms, as noted at the head of each. The reason for the omission is a certain psychological difficulty, even though the psalms of imprecation are in fact used as prayer in the New Testament, for example, RV 610, and in no sense to encourage the use of curses. Two typical additions for celebrating the revised liturgy of the hours liturgia horarum according to the Roman Rite have been published by Rome. The current typical edition for the ordinary form of the Roman Rite is the Liturgia Horarum, Aditio Typica Altera, promulgated in 1985, printed between 1985 and 1987, and reprinted in 2000. This uses the Nova Vulgata Latin Bible for the readings, psalms and canticles rather than the Clementina. It has changed some of the readings and responsories according to the Nova Vulgata, and it provided for the Benedictus and Magnificat on Sundays with three antiphons each that reflect the three-year cycle of Gospel readings. Pope Urban VIII's lamented alterations of the hymns are undone. Verse numberings are added to the Psalms and the longer scripture readings, while the Psalms are given both the Septuagint numbering and in parentheses that of the Masoretic text and new texts, taken from the Missal Romanum, have been added in the appendix for solemn blessings and the penitential acts. Thus far, this second Latin typical edition has only been translated in the Liturgy of the Hours for Africa. The earlier edition has appeared in two English translations, one under the title, Liturgy of the Hours, the other as, The Divine Office. Topic. Obligation of recitation. 
Topic. In the Latin Church of the Catholic Church, bishops, priests, and deacons planning to become priests are obliged to recite the full sequence of the hours each day, keeping as far as possible to the true time of day, and using the text of the approved liturgical books that apply to them. Permanent deacons are to do so to the extent determined by their episcopal conference. Members of institutes of consecrated life, societies of apostolic life, or other religious associations e.g., Benedictine Oblates, Third Order Dominicans who are not clerics and are therefore not subject to these obligations are bound according to the norm of their constitutions. Members of such institutes and societies who are deacons, priests, or bishops, remain bound to their more severe obligation as clergy. Latin Church clerics can lawfully fulfill their obligation to pray the office using the addition of the Roman breviary promulgated by John the 23rd in 1961 rather than the current edition of the Liturgy of the Hours. While the 2007 Motu Proprio Summorum Pontificum states that communities belonging to institutes of religious life and societies of apostolic life require authorization only by their major superiors to use the 1962 edition of the Roman Missal for their conventual or community mass frequently, habitually or permanently, it makes no such statement regarding use of the 1962 Liturgy of the Hours, which however could be allowed by their constitutions. Laity, especially if they are involved in ministries of the Church lector, cantor, extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, catechists, religious education directors or school principals, altar servers, those contemplating religious life or the seminary, are strongly encouraged to participate. The constitutions of some institutes of consecrated life, in particular many congregations of Benedictine monks and nuns, but also others, oblige them to follow an arrangement of the Psalter whereby all the Psalms are recited in the course of a single week, partly through an extension of the Office of Readings, and by maintaining the Hour of Prime. <laughs> Historical development Topic. Judaism and the early church topic. As is noted above, the canonical hours stemmed from Jewish prayer. During the Babylonian exile, when the temple was no longer in use, the first synagogues were established, and the services at fixed hours of, the day of Torah readings, psalms, and hymns began to evolve. This sacrifice of praise began to be substituted for the sacrifices of animals. By the time of the Roman Empire, the Jews and eventually early Christians began to follow the Roman system of conducting the business day in scheduling their times for prayer. In Roman cities, the bell in the forum rang the beginning of the business day at about 6 o'clock in the morning prime, the first hour, noted the day's progress by striking again at about 9 o'clock. Clock in the morning, terse, the third hour, told for the lunch break at noon, sext, the sixth hour, called the people back to work again at about 3 o. Clock in the afternoon, none, the ninth hour, and rang the close of the business day at about six o'clock in the evening, the time for evening prayer. The first miracle attributed to the apostles, the healing of the crippled man on the temple steps, occurred because Peter and John went to the temple to pray. Acts chapter 3 verse 1. This was at the ninth hour of prayer about 3 p.m., the time at which the evening sacrifice was celebrated in the temple in the New Testament second temple period. One of the defining moments of the early church, the decision to include Gentiles among the community of believers, arose from a vision Peter had while praying at noontime Acts chapter 10 verses 9 to 49. This was at the sixth hour. The time of the Musaf prayers associated with additional sacrifices in the temple on special days. As Christianity began to separate from Judaism, the practice of praying at fixed times continued. The early church was known to pray the Psalms, Acts chapter 4 verses 23 to 30, which has remained a part of the canonical hours and all Christian prayer since. By 60 AD, the Dadash, the oldest known liturgical manual for Christians, recommended disciples to pray the Lord prayer three times a day, this practice found its way into the canonical hours as well. Pliny the Younger 63 c. 113, who was not a Christian himself, mentions not only fixed times of prayer by believers, but also specific services—other than the Eucharist, Assigned to those times, they met on a stated day before it was light, and addressed a form of prayer to Christ, as to a divinity, 
after which it was their custom to separate, and then reassemble, to eat in common a harmless meal. By the second and third centuries, such church fathers as Clement of Alexandria, Origen, and Tertullian wrote of the practice of morning and evening prayer, and of the prayers at terse, sext, and nun. The prayers could be prayed individually or in groups. By the third century, the Desert Fathers, the earliest monks, began to live out Saint Paul's command to pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 by having one group of monks pray one fixed hour prayer while having another group pray the next prayer. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Middle Ages. Topic. As the format of unbroken fixed-hour prayer developed in the Christian monastic communities in the East and West, longer prayers soon grew, but the cycle of prayer became the norm in daily life in monasteries. By the 4th century, the characteristics of the canonical hours more or less took their present shape. For secular clergymen and lay people, the fixed-hour prayers were by necessity much shorter. In many churches and basilicas staffed by monks, the form of the fixed-hour prayers was a hybrid of secular and monastic practice. In the East, the development of the divine services shifted from the area around Jerusalem to Constantinople. In particular, St. Theodore the Studite c. 758 c. 826 combined a number of influences from the Byzantine court ritual with monastic practices common in Asia Minor, and added thereto a number of hymns composed by himself and his brother Joseph see Tipicon for further details. In the West, Saint Benedict in his famous rule modeled his guidelines for the prayers on the customs of the basilicas of Rome. It was he who expounded the concept in Christian prayer of the inseparability of the spiritual life from the physical life. The Benedictines began to call the prayers the Opus Dei or Work of God. As the divine office grew more important in the life of the Church, the rituals became more elaborate. Soon, praying the office began to require various books, such as a Psalter for the Psalms, a lectionary to find the assigned scripture reading for the day, a Bible to proclaim the reading, a hymnal for singing, etc. As parishes grew in the Middle Ages away from cathedrals and basilicas, a more concise way of arranging the hours was needed. So, a sort of list developed called the breviary, which gave the format of the daily office and the texts to be used. The spread of breviaries eventually reached Rome, where Pope Innocent III extended its use to the Roman Curia. The Franciscans sought a one-volume breviary for its friars to use during travels, so the order adopted the breviarium curiae, but substituting the Gallican Psalter for the Roman. The Franciscans gradually spread this breviary throughout Europe. Pope Nicholas III would then adopt the widely used Franciscan breviary to be the breviary used in Rome. By the 14th century, the breviary contained the entire text of the canonical hours. <laughs> Roman Rite since the Council of Trent <laughs> Revision by Pope Pius V Topic. The Council of Trent, in its final session on 4 December 1563 entrusted the reform of the breviary to the then Pope, Pius IV. On 9 July 1568, Pope Saint Pius V, the successor to Pius IV who closed the Council of Trent, promulgated an addition, known as the Roman Breviary, with his apostolic constitution quad anobis, imposing it in the same way in which, two years later, he imposed his Roman Missal and using language very similar to that in the bull quo primum with which he promulgated the Missal, regarding for instance, the perpetual force of its provisions, the obligation to use the promulgated text in all places, and the total prohibition of adding or omitting anything, declaring in fact, "...no one whosoever is permitted to alter this letter or heedlessly to venture to go contrary to this notice of our permission, statute, ordinance, command, precept, grant, indult declaration, will decree and prohibition." Should anyone, however, presume to commit such an act, he should know that he will incur the wrath of Almighty God and of the blessed Apostles Peter and Paul. <inaudible> <inaudible> Further revision before the Second Vatican Council Later popes altered the Roman breviary of Pope Pius V. Pope Clement VIII instituted obligatory changes on 10 May 1602, 34 years after Pius V's revision. 
Pope Urban VIII made further changes, including a profound alteration in the character of some of the hymns. Although some of them without doubt gained in literary style, nevertheless, to the regret of many, they also lost something of their old charm of simplicity and fervor. Pope Pius XII allowed the use of a new translation of the Psalms from the Hebrew and established a special commission to study a general revision, concerning which all the Catholic bishops were consulted in 1955. His successor, Pope John XXIII, implemented these revisions in 1960. Topic. Revision following the Second Vatican Council Topic. Topic. Latin typical editions Topic. Following the Second Vatican Council, the Catholic Church's Latin Church, hoping to restore their character as the prayer of the entire Church, revised the liturgical book for the celebration of the Divine Office, and published it under the title Liturgy of the Hours. The Council itself abolished the office of prime, and envisioned a manner of distributing the Psalms over a period of more than one week. In the succeeding revision, the character of Matins was changed to an office of readings so that it could be used at any time of the day as an office of scriptural and hagiographical readings. Furthermore, the period over which the Psalter is recited has been expanded from one week to four. The Latin hymns of the Roman office were in many cases restored to the pre-urban form, albeit several of them were shortened. This new Liturgy of the Hours Liturgia Horarum in Latin is published by Libraria Editrice Vaticana in four volumes, arranged according to the liturgical seasons of the church year. Volume 1, Advent and Christmastide Volume 2, Lent, the Sacred Triduum and Eastertide Volume 3, Weeks 1-17 of the Year Volume 4, Weeks 18-34 of the Year the Current liturgical books for the celebration of the Liturgy of the Hours in Latin are those of the Adidio Typica Altera second typical edition, promulgated in 1985 and reissued, by the Vatican Publishing House, Libraria Editrice Vaticana, in 2000 and 2003. Midwest Theological Forum has published an edition IUXTA typicum with updating of the celebration of saints. It is arranged in six volumes, Volume 1, Advent and Christmastide Volume 2, Lent, and the Sacred Triduum Volume 3, Eastertide Volume 4, Weeks 1-14 of the Year Volume 5, Weeks 12-24 of the Year Volume 6, Weeks 21-34 of the Year Although most priests and other clerics in the Latin Church now use the new Liturgy of the Hours, some, such as those in the Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter or similar societies continue to use the Breviary as revised by Pope Pius X, the latest edition of which was issued under Pope John XXIII. The Motu Proprio Summorum Pontificum in 2007 authorized every Latin Church cleric to use this edition to fulfill his canonical obligation to pray the Divine Office. An English, Latin parallel edition was published by Baronius Press in April 2012. Topic official English translations Topic Three English translations are in use. Topic the Divine Office non -ICEL translation. Topic the Divine Office was produced by a commission set up by the Episcopal Conferences of Australia, England and Wales, Ireland and Scotland. First published in 1974 by HarperCollins, this edition is the official English edition for use in the dioceses of the above countries as well as many other dioceses around the world, especially in Asian and African countries. It is arranged in three volumes, Volume 1, Advent, Christmastide and Weeks 1-9 of the Year Volume 2, Lent and Eastertide Volume 3, Weeks of the Church Year 6-34, the Psalms are taken with slight adaptations from the 1963 Grail Psalms, while the Scripture readings and non-Gospel canticles are taken from various versions of the Bible, including the Revised Standard Version, the Jerusalem Bible, the Good News Bible, the New English Bible and Ronald Knox's translation of the Vulgate. Some of the canticles taken from the Revised Standard Version were amended slightly to conform the English text to the Vulgate in the Divine Office. The intercessions, concluding prayers, antiphons, short responses, responsories, second readings in the Office of Readings, Te Deum and Glory Be to the Father are all translations approved by the Episcopal Conferences mentioned and confirmed by the Holy See in December 1973. 
The Gospel Canticles Benedictus, Magnificat, Nunc Dimittis are from the 1963 Grail translation, but an appendix at the end of the book gives the English language liturgical consultation (ELLC) versions of the Gospel Canticles as alternatives. Collins also publishes shorter editions of the Divine Office, Daily Prayer, comprising the complete Divine Office, except for the Office of Readings, but the full Office of Readings are printed only for Christmas, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday morning and evening prayer, comprising the complete morning, evening and night prayers from the Divine Office Shorter Morning and Evening Prayer, comprising the Psalter for morning, evening and night prayers and a selection of texts from the liturgical seasons and feasts. Between 2005 and 2006, Collins republished the Divine Office and its various shorter editions with a new cover and revised calendar of the movable feasts. Besides these shorter editions of the Divine Office, there used to be a shorter prayer during the day comprising the Psalter for the Middle Hours also published by Collins. The last known reprint year is 1986, but this edition is now out of print. In 2009, Prayer During the Day was published by Catholic Truth Society. Topic. Liturgy of the Hours ICEL translation. Topic. The Liturgy of the Hours, produced by the International Committee on English in the Liturgy, Inc. ICEL, was first published in 1970 by Catholic Book Publishing Company in the USA. This edition is the official English edition for use in the USA, Canada and some other English-speaking dioceses. It is in four volumes, an arrangement identical to the original Latin typical edition. The Psalms are taken slightly adapted from the 1963 Grail Psalms, while the Scripture readings and non-Gospel canticles are taken from the original 1970 First Edition New American Bible. The prayers and intercessions are translated by the International Commission on English in the Liturgy The ELLC versions are used for items such as the Gospel canticles. An additional feature are psalm prayers at the end of many psalms, which were ICEL's translation of the Liber Orationum Psalmographus, the book of psalm prayers which originated in the Mozarabic Rite. Shorter editions of the Liturgy of the Hours are also available from various publishers, Christian Prayer Daughters of St. Paul and Catholic Book Publishing Company, Shorter Christian Prayer Catholic Book Publishing Company and Daytime Prayer Catholic Book Publishing Company. In 2007, Liturgy Training Publications released the Mundelein Psalter, containing morning, evening and night prayers and the Office for the Dead, with the 1963 Grail translation of the Psalms set to specially composed chant, and with hymns translated from the hymns of the Latin Liturgia Horarum. The Divine Office and the Liturgy of the Hours editions are both based on the Latin 1971 Adidio Typica. Topic. Liturgy of the Hours ICEL, African translation. In 2009, on the occasion of the Synod of African Bishops in Rome, the Catholic Church in Africa, through Pauline's Publications Africa, published a new English edition of the Liturgy of the Hours based on the Liturgia Horarum, Adidio Typica Altera. The antiphons and orations in this edition are taken from ICEL's 1975 translation of the Liturgy of the Hours, with independent translations for the offices for the new saints added to the general Roman calendar as well as the Benedictus and Magnificat antiphons for the three-year cycle on Sundays added in the Liturgia Horarum, Aditio Typica Altera. The Psalms are taken from the revised Grail Psalter with the rest of the biblical texts taken from the New American Bible. To date, this is the only official English edition of the office that is based on the Liturgia Horarum, Aditio Typica Altera. See also Angelus Book of Hours Plenarium Ramsha Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. References Topic. Topic. External links Topic. General instruction from the breviary the Divine Office, a study of the Roman breviary by the Rev. E. J. Quigley EWTN article on the Liturgy of the Hours, Divine Office, breviary Discovering Prayer, How to Pray the Liturgy of the Hours by Seth H. 
Murray also available with audio samples Breviary Timeline, a timeline of official 20th century breviaries Divinum Officium, an online dynamic version of the Breviarium Romanum according to the rubrics of 1960